here we are here's another experimental background that I have to make a landscape out of for this series of six I'm trying to do a little different technique in each one so I'm going to do now more of a close-up of some foliage and weeds in the foreground so I'm taking my script liner and let's see let's make a let's use a burnt sienna So we'll find a little space here, burnt sienna. With a little bit of phthalo blue. Looking for a really lovely green. A bit more burnt, oops, a bit more burnt sienna in there. That will do me. I'll just show you what that looks like on a scrap piece of paper. It's just a really dark, cool green. So I'm just going to do some foreground foliage. bit at this side too just keeping it nice and messy weeds are not neat coming in from the side Now I'm going to use a little bit more of the burnt sienna, just adding it to the mix and doing some warmer colours over the top. My idea was when I looked at this area through here, it almost looks like a river running through. Okay, back with a little brush, just a little double O round. And I'm just going to use some of those colors still by doing a little bit of splattering in this area. Now remember to splatter, you need your paint quite runny. Can't splatter with thick paint. bit of that burnt sienna again just mixing it in get these lovely bulrushes down near the lake where I live
So I'll just speed this up for you. just want to darken up some of those a little bit so I'm just taking a little bit more of that phthalo blue and just adding some little darker ones just in towards the center don't need to do it on all of them We'll get some of that splattering happening with that colour too. A little bit of patting there. Okay, a little bit of the gouache. Uh, I've just washed the brush, so I'm just getting a bit of the gouache now. I'm making a runny mix. A bit like milk. I'm going to, while I've got that on the brush, I've just added a bit more water to it because this time I want it to be a little bit transparent. See how transparent it is when you paint it over a colour? And just in here, Just add a little moth. A little bit of phthalo blue on the brush, just a tiny, tiny bit. You don't want this to be too overpowering. towards the centre of the moth. And just with a clean brush, just blending out. And I'll just dry this off and I'll come back and finish that moth for you. Here we go, we're all nice and dry. I just want to add a little bit more light to the wings to enable it to stand out just that little bit more. Now while that's drying, it's not finished, but while it's drying I'm just going to use my pen. Just a black gel pen or a fibre tipped pen would be fine. And just adding some more of these weeds and grasses. A little bit more definition.
keeping it very loose just a little bit of scribbling really just to help define Okay, let's finish up this moth. And I think this one's done. And there we go. There we have it. So this is my final one of the six. And I'll just turn it around for you so that you can see it at different angles. This could possibly be a, a tree. But what about this? I don't think it really works with a really dark colour up here. Saying that side, I think I'm going to have to work this way. And, you know, I could easily make this into kind of a headland I guess and pop something on top of it this almost looks like a fence post so maybe I could make another sort of fence here and um, and just rely on the sky to be like a stormy sky maybe I could have a tree going up here and a bit of a fence here. As you all know, I'm a bit of a tree fan, so I'm just going to go with some trees. I'm just going to use my round brush. I'm taking some phthalo turquoise this time. Some will think, oh goodness, that's a very, very bright colour, and it is. But let's just see how we go. Another one next to it. We'll have a little group of trees. I am going to use a different technique in this one, trying to make each video just that little bit different. I'm going to use some ink. It's just my jar of just black ink. That's all it is. 
But first of all, I'm going to just use my spray bottle and give this a little spray. Now I'm just going to tilt the paper and I'm just going to let that ink just run along and play in all those little droplets of water. Little pat will help it run. Just touching into some of those droplets too. In areas where they are not connected will help as well. All right, let's go with the ink. Just added a little bit of water to my brush. down there that's it there we go just touching now a little bit into into the areas where the water spray has gone Now we need to address the, the odd thing, is all I can call it, down here. So I'm just going to use the same colours, a little bit of the um, thalo turquoise. And some ink. Just at the base of those trees. I'm just going to wash my brush now. And I've got a clean brush and I'm just going to soften up down here. I rather like how it fades away into that lovely colour there. Just add in some, getting rid of the straight lines to make it look as though there is actually foliage there. And we'll go and use the script liner now. I just want to add another little bit of black in this area. That's the ink that I'm using. I really love how the ink granulates when you pop it on top of a watercolour. Back to a little brush and just using again some ink. In fact, I think that that might be a little bit large, so I'm just going to use my gel pen. I 
I only really wanted a really tiny bird in here. I'm just making sure I'm not squishing up um, that wet paint that's there that I've already applied. You could definitely pencil in your bird before you ink it in if you feel more comfortable doing that. And I think this one's done. So we are going to have a quick whiz through and look at what I've created out of that one large sheet of paper and then I'll wish you best of luck but stay tuned for the run through and just a recap of the paintings. So as promised here's a close-up of the six paintings all created from one sheet of A3 Canson cold press watercolour paper. Just recapping, I taped the paper down, added various colours to it, let it run, let them mix and mingle, threw some salt on, did some splattering and then I let it dry. So then I cut it up into six squares and that resulted in me doing six different paintings all along the same theme connected by colour and technique and also subject matter. So I'm just going to give you a close up of each one. I'm not sure which is my favourite. I think I've got a couple of favourites. Really love this one. And I love the fresh colours in this one too. I love painting sheep. Hard to choose. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos and that you will have a play around making your own backgrounds and dividing them up and creating a series of paintings. Thanks for watching. I'm trying to build my channel. I would love you to subscribe and keep watching. Thank you.